Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Caroline's Knits. Um, today I'm filming a video that I have done all the other years. I have both been knitting and been on YouTube um, and it's everything that I knit in 2023. I have a good pile down here. I have a handy dandy little list so I don't forget um, and let's get stuck into it. Um, I am slightly differently placed than where I usually film because I wanted more room um, but the unfortunate thing about my house which I love and I'm very fortunate to have is that um, we are north facing at the back of the house so I reckon the light might be a little bit cold so all the colours might have a slightly colder temperature but I'll see what I can do in the edit. The dog is currently out with the dog walker but she might come through um, and if you are new here <laughs> I guess I should do the basic introduction, which is that obviously my name is Caroline and I live in Scotland with my husband Ben and our dog Vela, the one that's out with the dog walker. And um, I'm originally Danish, um, but yeah, I've lived in Scotland for nine years now. This will be my 10th year. And let's get started. First of all, I thought what would be interesting, and I actually look back at my old videos, which is always kind of kind of weird um, is that um, I thought I'd look back and see how much I've knitted the other years and I'm just going to give the typical disclaimer which is that there's absolutely you know it's hard not to compare what everyone else makes and what you make and I don't think compared to some that I make all that much but obviously I am conscious that I have knitted a lot this year I have spent a lot of money on yarn in the past few years etc 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 so I know that for some people this will seem like a lot and maybe for some of you this will seem like very little. Um, so I looked back in 2020, this form of video was purely what I called ego knits. You might remember in 2020 we were very keen on like selfish knitting and ego knitting kind of in terms, which I'm glad that we've left behind. But I did eight in 2020 and I started knitting in May, so we're not talking a full year. In 20. 21 I did 18 projects and in 2022 I also did 18 projects. I can already spoil now that I did 17 projects this year. Now I actually think that's quite a decent number um, based on the stack of knitting which I will lift up. I think you know <laughs> this is still a lot of mileage it's still you know a lot of really good projects um, and I think well, this year I didn't knit as much as the last two years. I think I've hit a much better like place with how much I knit. I think I've become much better at sometimes doing other things um, and kind of having a different focus. And I always knit less over summer, which I think this pile definitely reflects that most of these projects have been finished early in the year when it was cold and later in the year. But Enough waffling. I said we'd get right into it and here I am waffling. <laughs> um, my first project of the year is the Sharpie sweater. And here it is. And I'm going to pop it on and I'll magically edit out me putting all the garments on this year because I realised last year I spent an hour. So I don't want to do that this year. Here we are. This is the first project I finished in 2023. This is the Sharpie sweater. Um, I will pop information about everything. I should mention that the yarn for this was kindly sponsored um, by Bindling. Um, and what you can't tell is that actually the size of the sweaters is essentially double because of like these like pleats that you knit. And I knitted it in this like raspberry colour. I do like it and I'm actually wearing it now. I think I need to Basically, I need to refold all my knits, and I think this will help me get into that spirit. Um, but I think that would help bring this sort of like up on my list. It took forever to knit, I'm just going to be honest. It's not a quick knit because, as I said, every single row is essentially double the length. So it's essentially like knitting two sweaters. Because if you count it that way, I did need knit 18 <laughs> projects in um, 2023. It is nice. I think this was like... One of the last knits where I feel like this was like I've only had two sponsored test knits, test knits this year and they were all at the start of the year 
and um, if you look back to 2022 I had a lot more and I feel like this is like the last example of me going for a colour instead of a neutral and if I could, could go back I would probably just have knitted this in a neutral as much as I love the colour I just think you get so much more wear out of neutrals right that was project number one project number two is a pair of socks these are the pearl socks and they're knitted and um, top my only pair of top socks for this year i remember because dayan is hand dyed by sakami and the my hairs are veta tilia that had left over for a different project and i have worn these loads the pearl socks um i can't believe how bad i am at remembering it's gone and slicked isn't it um that just that design these um these are just so nice they're dk weight with the added my hair I've worn really well, they're really comfy, I've worn them in boots and shoes and they've been good and I haven't had that much wear on them so I'd really recommend this pattern um, and yeah I knitted a few, I knitted three socks this year which I think is pretty good but yeah these were a definite winner. Next project is sweater number 18. Here it is, this is sweater number 18, um, a lovely drop shoulder construction um, it's knitted in this like um, pink colour um, with hand dyed cereal packer from Takami again and this has probably funnily enough speaking about the Sharpie and how I think I picked the wrong colour this has been perfect choice this has been so so easy to wear um, I've worn this so much in the home office the yarn the main strand is some kind of I think it's from Lanagato it's called Feeling and I bought it from there and it's a silk cashmere merino blend. So it's soft, it's comfortable. I just love it. I have worn it so much and I just love the colour. Um, and I think the reason this has been worn so much is less of the colour, which once again, probably would use this more if it was neutral, but more just that it's a comfortable fit. I personally feel really comfortable in a drop shoulder and this is one of the few sweaters where the length is pretty good. I don't know if you can tell, but it actually covers like all the way around with a nice slightly dipped in the back because of the construction. And yeah, sweater number 18 has been an absolute winner for me to the point I would knit another sweater um, like this model again in a different yarn, um, which is quite rare. My next project is sweater number 24. Um, also by my favourite things that wear, just like sweater number 18. And this is always such a nightmare to put on because it's really hard to tell what the back is. I think that's right. So here we are. This is sweater number 24. Um, full transparency, this is the final project where Yarn was sponsored. This is sponsored, I think it's Capard, sponsored this one. Um, and it's knitted in boucle, so it's that kind of loopy yarn and um it's my final test knit for my favorite things and i reckon it will be my final test knit ever because basically it's not completely ideal to have to knit a larger size so i'm a little bit slower and i'm probably not as fast as i was at like my prime of knitting and second of all the yarn takes a long time to come to the uk so i can't keep up with the very tight deadlines which is probably for the better because it's quite stressful having to knit, you know, like a full size garment in about a week, um, even if it's on bigger needles like this is. This is actually underneath the boucle, which is really what you can see. It's a very simple drop shoulder, simpler than her usual, because you can't, well, you can't tell if there's a fancy drop shoulder anyway, you can't even tell that there's ribbing <laughs> really. And I love the colour and I definitely think there's more black garments in my future. I didn't find knitting in black the hard bit. I found knitting in boucle the hard bit. And then I made one thing, which at the time I should just have corrected because I was late anyway, and I don't know what difference it made. But I knit one sleeve on a size smaller needle because I don't think, I think I could knit the whole sleeve on 40 centimeter circulars. And so I didn't realize till the tail end I'd done what the ribbing was meant to be on, on Think this right sleeve and it's kind of funny because to the naked eye you can't see it I don't think I don't think you'd look at this and think oh this sleeve is definitely smaller but when you wear it and I actually wore 
this yesterday, you constantly feel like something is wrong because the, the lengths aren't quite the same and the fit aren't quite the same. And if it was a different yarn, I would probably have done it over. Picking up stitches in Boucle is horrific. Boucle is such a beautiful yarn, but I would probably keep it more to like accessories or pillows or like thing, but like decorative pillows that no one touches kind of thing. Because once they peel, it's, you can't depill, so you kind of have to come with a scissor and like trim where you see lots of the fluff. And yeah, I'm not that big a fan of it. And also, I think the neckline on this, I don't know if you can tell, but it has grown a lot. Um, so I could really use some, probably just some elastic just to keep it a little bit more up. But yeah, um, the sleeve drives me bonkers. <laughs> So I don't think I can give it quite a fair reflection, but I do think it's quite a fun, fun piece. And actually, the pictures I took for Instagram in this are probably the favourite pictures I took of the finished object last year. Right. Um, after this, my next project is a much smaller one, so I can put that on while I'm talking. Um, it's uh, my second pair of penny gloves from Petit Knit. I already have one pair that's knitted in Phil Kalana Saga held with um, Tilly and Moika. And these ones are just one strand of um, Ysera um, Alpaca one, which is like a bit like Elva or like Alpaca Fugliotol. It's like a thin strand of 100% Alpaca. And here they are. Showing you a close up of my boobs a little bit as well. Um, these are quite grim because <laughs> Um, I wear them on dog walks and I decided to knit in this colour because I thought dark grey isn't going to show the mud as much. Um, because of the fact that I believe in positive reinforcement for dog training, I give a lot of treats to the Little Menace and so I kind of need my fingers out. And in general when we go to Hoopers, which is the dog sport we do together or other things, I really need my hands accessible and these gloves are just perfect for that. And I would knit another pair. It is one of my favourites, not because of the style, but because of the function. And I think that's something I really came to realise this year that I need to knit just as much for function, or at least most of my projects needs to be for function. Um, and this is definitely one of them. And a pack of one is perfect for this. I had like some left of like one skein, and it doesn't even use a whole skein. So if you're starting already to think about what kind of Christmas knits you could do. This is a perfect one because you just do stock in it forever. Um, it's easy, there's li little to think about besides when you do the thumb bit. And I think everyone could kind of get use out of it. And the fact you could get a whole pair out of less than one skein, I think is really nice as well. After the penny gloves, I finished another garment. This has clearly suffered horrible fate being stuffed in my cupboard that I kind of need to basically fold all my sweaters neatly, which I haven't done for a while. Um, so it is a little bit crinkled. I do apologise. Um, why do these sleeves feel a different length now? I swear. <laughs> it's like, oh, much better. It's like such a funny century feeling. This is the Semper Sweater V-neck designed by my lovely friend, the Knit Pearl Girl, or Sophie. And um, this is knit in yarn I received um, as a present for my wedding, um, hand dyed by Sakami, um, which I'm sure you're noticing a trend, but I love Sakami. <laughs> so um, it's no surprise um, that the yarn is from there, basically. Um, the colour is called Gilly Do, even though it's obviously one of a kind because I got married in Gilly Do. And um, this is a V-neck pattern. It smells a little bit like I've left it in the cupboard too long. I kind of struggle, I've struggled to wear it and pulling it out now, I'm actually kind of keen to see what I think when I see the video. Sorry, but, I don't understand. Oh, sorry, Siri. Um, I'm kind of keen to see what I think pulling it out again and seeing it on camera because I always find that really interesting. Um, but as you can tell, good, good length on, on sleeves, on body. Um, it's a really pretty pattern, like the Semper patterns I give a 10 out of 10 if you're just learning to knit, you know, they are raglan, the v-neck was really easy to do and I hate picking up stitches but I think that has turned out really neat. I just think 
I've kind of struggled to wear hand dyed this year. So um, yeah, and also when I knitted this, um, again, you will notice if you've been here a while, I used to have very long hair and I used to have fringe and it used to be not a completely different colour. I've always been blonde, but currently it's a lot blonder here in the front bits and it's more red. Um, not, not as red just now because we're coming up for a haircut and a re-dye. But, um, but I do think it has slightly changed how things look on me. I don't really have anything bad to say about it besides the fact that I need to figure out how I can incorporate it back into my wardrobe. I find in winter time v-necks are too cold for me to wear in the home office because I get really cold on my chest. I would love ideas on how you would style it so you can kind of get back into the rotation. After the December sweater I finished a Sophie scarf which I don't have with me because I gave it away. The Sophie scarf was knitted in some of the pink yarn left over, excuse me, from sweater number 18. And I gave it to my auntie who has used it loads. And I might make another Sophie scarf in that yarn or use that yarn for another scarf because it didn't actually use all that much. And um, the pink is a very nice color and it really suits my auntie. So that was my seventh project. Um, my eighth project was the Bjarne Ginter by Sandness, which I have in one of the pamphlets, or like a pattern for one of the Sandness pamphlets, uh, knitted in original yarn. Found that really nice to knit. It's um, the bare faces done with duplicate stitch, which I quite enjoyed actually. I think it's quite um, quite a nice design. Probably still own a tiny bit from Petite Knits, like bare sweater, but hey ho. Um, and I gave that to my friend who had a baby. Another pattern I'll knit again, DK weight, baby knits, always, always nice to kind of break things up if you're starting to slow down a little bit. Then number nine was the, or is the, I should say, is the early morning sweater. Here we are. This is the early, early morning sweater designed by Knit Flitter or Nina. Um, I've test knit it for her before and I helped her with some pattern translation stuff and she actually gifted me the my hair and then I bought the main strand myself. And the early morning sweater is, as you can tell, it's a raglan. I think this is called maybe a compound raglan when the increase doesn't remain the same. Has nice big poofy sleeves where you have some increases to create a proper big balloon sleeve. And um, it has a, a twisted knit stitch in all of the ribbing. And yeah, it's... It's not in a traditional sense a complex knit, um, it also has short rows. Like it doesn't look complex in that way, but it's very well thought out and I thoroughly enjoyed knitting it. You might be able to tell quite a big difference now from December sweater, but obviously this is a lot shorter. Um, if I stand here from the back, you can see these are obviously very high-waisted trousers and it just about covers. Um, so I thought this was going to be just as long as the Semper sweater and I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. I think it's because I look at it and I'm like, oh, but that looks fairly long. It must be full length. This definitely isn't full length. But actually, I have really enjoyed this not being full length because in contrast to the Semper sweater, this uh, works really well with what I tend to wear for work. So for work, I often wear high-waisted, wide leg trousers. I often share fancy office outfits on my Instagram if you're curious and this just kind of fits because you can kind of just tuck the front bit front bit in a little bit you could wear a shirt underneath if you want to you can just wear it on its own because I think the sort of like subtle hand dyed effect is easy to wear um I have a pair of high-waisted blue like navy blue trousers and I've worn it loads with that and it's kind of a fat free comfortable um knit the only thing is um, which is on my list to fix this year, is that I am fairly certain I sewed down the neckline and I have sewn it down too tight. And I think it, it kind of means that the neck wants to kind of stick up like that. And actually you want it to be able to kind of fall out more like it does when I pull it, um, but it doesn't when it actually wants to kind of get this like bit of a fluffy neck. Um, so that's on my list to fix, but actually this is a sweater I've worn quite a lot this year. I don't think I've de-peeled it yet, and I don't actually think the, the wear is too bad. Um, the mohair that Nina gifted to me is the Adegans, uh Silk Mohair, which is a, a Danish brand, I think. And I have to say, I don't find it that soft, and I'm not really sure why. 
oh, not to get off. As you can tell, the biggest problem with the tight neckline is actually getting it on and off. Next project, I think is this, yeah, is um, the camis camisole number seven, also by my favourite things knitwear. Actually, the yarn was gifted for this, but um, this was sent in to test the year before, so I was just incredibly slow. Um, the yarn was gifted from this from Pascali, um, and I know you're not going to get the full effect because I'm wearing like a high neck um, cami underneath, but hopefully you can kind of get feel for the fit. I, when I test knitted this, I was definitely like bus circumference wise, a bigger size than I am now and more than just my bus, but especially here around like my belly. <laughs> I was a slightly bigger size and so if I had to knit it now and pick a size I would have picked a different size and because this was like you know like a whip I didn't finish for about a year um you know things change but I do like it I don't think I'll be like woven in the ends here that neatly um kind of hard to do even though I've done it in pattern it still just shows through um which is really really annoying um but yeah it's nice pick the neutral color this was the same one as my favorite things knitwear's own sample was in because i quite like it it's like a grayish greenish color um i have worn this in high waisted trousers tucked in and i quite like that but yeah it's just a cami i think for me i've discovered that summer knits are maybe just not really my jam because i find that things i wear that close to like in the layers of my body, I kind of want to wash too often for it to be worth it, basically. Now we come to my, um, to the next knit. So this is the Elizabeth blouse, and this was, um, or is number 11. Right, here it is. This is the Elizabeth blouse, and, um, excuse me, it's itchy nice. Um, this is a pattern by Petite Knit, and it's funny because sometimes I feel like Petite Knit releases a pattern and it goes absolutely like viral and everyone makes it. Um, like, you know, just in, in the past year, you know, like the penny gloves, I feel like penny gloves were massive. Sophie Scoff, massive project. I, I was just um, updating Ravelry today and I think it has over 14,000 projects for, so, for the Sophie Scoff. And I'm, I've just finished a Celeste sweater, another one I feel like everyone kind of went through a phase of knitting. And I actually feel like the Elizabeth blouse you know, obviously lots of people have knitted it because it's petite knit and she's a famous designer, but not as many as some of her other patterns. And I feel like it very much kind of went on the radar when it was released. Now, when I very first started knitting, she released a Maud tee, which is the one that has buttons coming up here. And I didn't like it at all when it was released. I just thought it was too polo-like. Everyone scared me away in the sort of Danish knitting community by saying how hard it was. I was like, I'm definitely not going to be good enough for that. And so the mold tee was never, never really on my radar. And to be honest, this, this like pattern, so Elizabeth Klaus is a very similar concept with like the colour and um, the button bands here and all of this, but obviously there are no actual buttons. And at first I wasn't that bothered about it. Um, and then it came to this yarn. So this yarn, this year I'm very much focused on knitting through yarn that's been in my stash for a long time. I know I've had some sponsors test knits and all of that, um, but especially here towards the tail end of the year, I really started focusing on knitting yarns that've been in my stash for a long time. And if I struggle to know what to knit next, I basically picked all this yarn in my stash and worked my way forward. Um, that's actually why I knit the early morning sweater. And it's why I knit this um, and there's another yarn that's coming up I will talk about and so I had to pick a project for this. Now this yarn I bought in November 2020 when I left my previous job and moved to my current job. They very kindly gave me a gift card for loop knitting and you can actually see I've been podcasting long enough I think that's just around the time I started podcasting so you can probably see me talk about it but I really I have very different taste than I do now and I think at the time I felt like knitting in anything hand-dyed felt so out of like reach that with the gift card which I think was like 180 quid it was a lot of money I decided that the best use would be to buy some really nice hand-dyed yarn with a second strand because everything's you know held with my hair at the time um 
and kind of have that as the treat. And then I think it arrived and I liked it. But as much as I love the idea of pink and I think, sorry, I have definitely have some kind of hair or fluff on my eye. As much as I love the idea of pink, the very, the truth is that I don't know how much I actually love to wear pink. And so I kind of struggled to ever find a project that I thought this would be suitable for. Actually, if I had a knit the early morning sweater in the other yarn and it's that kind of, I'm just going to pick it up. And it's, you know, that kind of also like dusty colour, I could probably have seen myself knit that up. Um, but in the end, I went through like a bit of like, what do I actually need in my wardrobe? I don't think this would have done well in a pattern, it's too speckly for that, or like a lace kind of project. Um, it could have been nice and colour work, which one of my friends did suggest for the curse sweater that I knitted this up. I think it could have been really nice for that. Um, but in the end, I kind of decided decided that I needed to sort of figure out what my style is. I think pre-pandemic, um, I had an idea of what my style was. But obviously, you know, this year is like the first year we really fell out of the pandemic. And it really led me to sort of think about who am I as a person. You know, I've kind of gone from being in my early 20s and... Um, just starting my professional career to like, you know, I'm now 28, I'm married, I live in a house, I have a dog, I spend a lot of time with Fela and, um, you know, worked for a long time, I'm no longer a such early career, like I'm still early career, but not as much. And so I just felt like everything about what I like and wanted had maybe changed from when I first started knitting and when I bought this yarn. And all of this kind of led me to this pattern because I think I've discovered that, I think I've, I've talked about it before, but I like tailored with a feminine twist. That's very much what I seem to gravitate towards. So obviously I do wear jeans, but um, like for work, I always wear like suit trousers. I wear suits to work um, and I often have quite tailored elements. I wear lots of blazers, I wear shirts a lot. Like I kind of wear things to have a bit more of that like more feel to it and I actually thought that this combination would be perfect because once again these were tucked into my navy blue trousers but I actually have worn it like this as well loads because the blouse just works well with a pair of jeans it's kind of like an outfit on its own one day it was really cold I wore like a roll neck um sweater like a maroon colored one underneath and I kind of give that like apres ski after ski style kind of look that's very in and it's just easy but it's kind of an outfit on its own and I think sometimes the sweaters that are just like classic sweaters they're not as much of an outfit on its own as this kind of is and all I can say is I was really nervous about knitting the colour and the double knitting this was my first time doing double knitting like this it's really not a hard pattern if you are an intermediate beginner and you're willing to take your time and take it slow you'd be absolutely fine the colour is actually knitted in the same concept as toe up socks so once you kind of grab your head or wrap your head around how you cast on that's not too bad and I just think the finish is really really good um the wear is pretty good I will say I don't know if you can tell by the way I've been like fidgeting this yarn to me the my hair for this is the Gepard Kit Sita and I was really excited to try it um, because when I first started knitting, loads of people really loved that yarn. I find this itchy. I find it a little bit just like prickly. I find I prefer to wear this with something that covers my back a lot more than the cami I'm kind of wearing today. Um, so that's it's like one negative. Um, but I love this pattern so much that when I work through a bit more of my, you know, full project quantities, um, or like full sweater, I should say, not full project, full sweater quantities in my stash, I would be very tempted to buy um, yarn specifically for this and knit it in black with white stripes or some kind of stripe um, project where the stripes start underneath the bust. That's kind of what I have in mind. You can knit this in one strand, Phil Colana Panilla, I think, but I might look at other alternatives, but something like that. I 100% think I'd get so much wear out of it. Um, because I love this style. And that was a very long chat, on to the next one. So to sort of talk about where we are in the year now, we are about to hit um, sort of summertime and we're about to hit the 12th project. Um, and so I don't know if you can tell, but clearly I had a few months of like knitting loads and then summertime it kind of slows down. 
I think that means that we'll, towards the tail end of the year, I often don't have many projects. The Sharpie sweater, I did start um, like in December 2022. And so I think you'll see the same next year. I always have more projects at the start of the year because I will have knitted over Christmas break where I often have a lot more knitting time than I have day to day. So my next project, I remember when I finished it, because I finished it just before we went on our belated honeymoon to Thailand. And this is the Crescendo Camisole by um, the Knit Pearl Girl again. So this is the 12th project. Again, I'm going to apologise for the fact that I'm wearing the camisole underneath or like the cami underneath because it doesn't look as cute, does it? Um, but you can kind of get the gist. It's this kind of like, um, this is probably the favourite fit on me because I quite like showing off my arms actually. And I think this shows off like arms and shoulders really nice. Um, here you can see it from the back. I did like a, a bow on the back here um, to tie it together. It has applied eye cords. My first time doing that actually. And yeah, um, I haven't worn this loads. To be fair, when we came back from Thailand, it was um, basically the start of September and living in Scotland, summer rarely lasts longer than that. So I haven't had much of a chance and I think the toughest thing is that this is some hand-dyed merino and I reckon it's going to be not something I can wear in like really hot climates like you know, Thailand when we went was plus 30 degrees so it's just too hot <laughs> to wear anything 100% merino but I reckon here in Scotland I could find a way to wear it but it's very very cute and this I knit mainly for the dopamine I just enjoyed knitting it the whole way through Sophie's patterns are always very detailed and very good so I would recommend. Speaking of Thailand the next project I started um, while we were in Thailand, this was one of the few knitting projects that I brought because I kind of thought it's going to be really hot, I might not feel much like knitting. And to be perfectly honest, not only do I not knit much in summertime, but this summer for my birthday, I'm born the 22nd of June. So I'm born like basically six, basically almost perfect six months from Christmas. Um, my partner gave me backlit Kindle and I just just read loads this year, read I think over 40 books. Um, I've also listened to some of them on Audible. Um, but I did mean that in summertime I knit it even less. And when we were in Thailand, I actually knit quite a lot. I finished, I mean, I think I finished a book series by Joe Abercrombie I'd been looking to finish for a long time. Um, I don't remember what I started after that. Um, but anyway, this was one of the sort of yarn... Um, one of the sort of yarn quantities or like project quantities I brought to cast on in Thailand if I so decided. These are the Hermione's Everyday Socks and they're not perfect. I don't know if you can tell but I knew I was going to run out of the hand dyed and so I started the toys extra early. It's an anatomical toy which is unusual in the pattern which is free. Um, it's a fine pattern. I did different heels which I kind of had to get through and yeah. They are just a pair of socks. They're nice. I haven't worn them all that much because I think I've come to discover that in contrast to many people who I see talk about socks, I actually prefer a long sock because I um, have a lot of trousers that <laughs> don't fully uh, go down to my ankles so I tend to have very cold ankles and yeah but I think they're cute. So that was project number, project number 13. Now, the next project, if you've been watching for a while, you might recognise this was a whip for a very, very, very long time. Um, simply because I had some trouble getting started on it and it's not really like mindless, you know, meeting knitting. It, it's kind of like you do have to like look while you're knitting. The lace repeat is repetitive enough that over time I found that was absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, it was definitely not my mess. And this is, I should probably say what it is. So project number 14 is the waffle cardigan and the pattern is by Knitting for Olive. I should say that what I have noticed when I've shared or like stories of my outfits that I wear to the office that knits in patterns that are patterns from Knitting for Olive, they tend to work well for the office. I think I have three projects now that I've knitted, uh, four actually, but three main ones that I wear all the time in the office. 
um, this being one of them because they, they might just have a little bit more like they're often a little bit more difficult nets maybe I don't know um, but yeah this has been one of them um, the Waffle Cardigan is as you can tell all over lace raglan knit in three strands of my hair this is quite an old pattern from them um, I think it was already released when I started knitting if that tells you anything but a lace cardigan never really goes out of style I don't think this is the oldest or was the oldest full sweater quantity yarn in my stash because it's knit in kit silk my hair from drops and prior to buying it in July 2020 and as I said I started knitting in May so I was still quite a new knitter I kind of thought um, I was really sensitive to wool I've become a lot better with time but I used to be really proper sensitive I used to you know I, I thought well I've knitted in Issa silk my hair all my hair must be created equal um, and then I bought the stuff from Drops and realised that is not the case. So I do, I just felt it and didn't think it felt as nice and then never really found something I bit. Um, it's, as you can probably tell, I've knit up two quantities of pink yarn this year that were bought in my first year of knitting because I feel like these kind of dusty colours were all the rage. And so that's kind of what I was influenced to buy. And to be honest, sweater number 18 is probably not too far behind from being in that kind of like light pink kind of rage which I think still exists personally I think these kind of colours they photograph really well people really like the look of them but in real life I, I don't know how many pink garments you really need or at least I need but yeah it's nice I was glad when I was finished to be honest once once I kind of reached once I'd finished the body especially it wasn't too bad I think I'm gonna I saw string things by Mel on Instagram recommending you kind of swivel some yarn around to create almost like a hank and it kind of keeps the buttons more on and I might try that because I don't know if you can tell but the buttons are a bit floppy um so that's on my to fix li list but it shouldn't be too bad um and I do really like the buttons so that's good I do think it could I think it does have short rows but it does feel like it should be a little bit longer in the back as well compared to the front so I think the buttons are always going to pull it down and yeah, I don't know. If I was to knit it again, I'm actually not sure you would need buttons on this. I don't know. Um, I did wear this to Lizzie's wedding, Hyphenate's wedding, um, because it really went with my dress and I thought I had to wear something knitted to a fellow knitter's wedding. Right, we are starting to be in the final three projects now. My next project's project is another pair of socks. So my third socks of the year. Fair to say, I felt like I needed a lot of accessories this year. Clearly I didn't. So um, I'm kind of hoping you will see more accessories in the next year so I can get through um, some of that stash. But I knitted the Morrison socks. Um, I've knitted one pair of these before, also in the Anfield and Bora yarn. So they essentially keep my hair sheet in um, Scotland that they get yarn spun with. There's a bit of Shetland in it. This I held with one ball of Drops Kid Silk. I had bought for like a stripy cardigan in my first year of knitting um, and then never knit up so I just have these random colours um, and so I used some of the red for this pair of socks. I did run out and so one tip has some Philcolana Peruvian in the toe and I actually think that's why I haven't worn them because it bothers my eye um, but I do need to photograph and share them. I wore them a bit back home because they feel very Christmassy in contrast to the original pair, but I did not run out of yarn, I added one more repeat in the leg um, just to get a bit more length because as I said, I like long socks, I have long legs already um, and so yeah, just takes a lot of yarn but I do really like the look of these and I still like the pattern. My other pair I have almost worn through the foot of the sock but obviously the yarn I've used is 100% non-superwash, non-sock yarn, no synthetic so I'm sort of hoping that this is also a test basically to see if silk my hair kind of helps the longevity of socks because if the pearl socks and the amount they have been worn and abused is anything to go by, I reckon that's true. Um, the thing I should say, and I think I've mentioned it before, these won't be too bad. What happens when you knit in non-superwash is that it kind of felts and it goes like fussy on the inside, which I find quite comfortable. I've definitely found out with both the pearl and my other non-superwash. Um, but yeah. I think I've also discovered I generally, I generally just quite like knitting DK weight socks 
and I quite like to do a bit of lace as well. Now, my final project of the year, last but 100% not least, is jacket number one by My Favourite Things Knitwear. Oh no, this isn't the last one, it's the second to last. This is another yarn that was kind of next after I finished some of the other projects because, um, because I bought it a long time ago and never knitted it up. I've spoken about this colour loads on the podcast, so I will try to be brief about this. But essentially, it's a very cool tone brown. It's knit in Phil Colonna Peruvian Highland wool, uh, held with Phil Colonna Tilia. And for me, this is just very cool, like it's a very cool tone brown and probably not what I would pick now. If I was to buy this exact combo, I would 100% knit this project again. But if I was, was to buy the yarn again, I would probably have gone for like Phil Colonna in marzipan or like a warmer colour. I think I would have gotten more use out of that. Regardless um, of the colour and my feelings about the colour, the model itself has turned out to be just as much of a hit as sweater number 18 and Elizabeth blouse. I just really like this kind of like casual drop style. Um, it has the same kind of details along the back with the picked up. Um, I love the lace, you can tell, similar to the sweater. I love the way it is like longer in the back because of the drop shoulder but comes up higher in the front because I think that's more flattering on my body shape. Um, I do need to sort of fiddle about with the buttons because you can tell this clearly isn't just right. I think it's because my double knit gauge changed. Um, so even though the buttons have been sewn up to match with the corresponding like row on the other side, I don't actually think it fully matches. So um, I might redo that. And also these buttons were never meant to be forever. Um, they were just meant to be like a temporary fix. So I could wear it when I went to, um, when we stayed for Lissy's wedding. Um, because I thought it would just be that perfect casual piece and I could be, you know, like, look a bit cooler. And I have worn this so much. I find this the easiest garment ever to style. I think I'm coming to realise that there's going to be a lot more neutrals in my wardrobe going forward. I'm really buying into this idea of, like, a small but well-curated wardrobe of pieces I really love and wear, like, really love, that are well-fitting, etc, etc. And this goes really well with it. Um, so I've worn this loads. Um, there's a bit of pilling, but I reckon that um, I've just finished another garment um, in Phil Colonna, Peruvian Highland Ball on its own, and having, having, having spoken to some of my knitting friends, I think I can expect a lot of pilling. Um, but it's not, not, it's not too, too bad, and I have worn this in like jackets, and um, obviously you, because it's so big, you rub on it all the time, but yeah, uh, the double knit band. Lots of people say they find it really painful. I didn't find it too, too bad. And my very, very final project um, was another Sophie scarf that I gave to my sister. I bought the yarn um, in Denmark so she could come along, feel it, tell me what she thought of the feel of the yarn because she's not a knitter herself. And I know that yarn that I might think is nice, she might not think is nice. And she wanted a black Sophie scarf and I didn't actually have um, the right kind of yarn for that in my stash I felt so that's what I bought um so I bought it while back home I knitted it in Sanders alpaca silk and I think she likes it um and that's all um thank you so so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it I love to look back in the in the year that went and I think I can sum it up quite easily what I'm hoping is coming in the next year um so my sort of three goals for the the year of knitting 2024 is, or like knitting in 2024, non-native issues sometimes, anyway, is number one, I want to continue working through my stash. I'm actually starting to notice that the amount is decreasing in my drawers and I'm starting to think more about how I can use the yarns that I have to fit with kind of the goals, or like kind of what I'm wanting to knit. So for example, I have the Celeste sweater from Petite Knit, um, that I need to proper dry and block after this and that is using purely stash yarn and I felt really proud of that because I really wanted to buy all the yarns, didn't think I could make it work with my stash and I have and I kind of want to continue down. I want to knit um, even more accessories um, so I can give some away potentially. 
and also so I just always have a small project on the go. I really found that nice. The second thing I want to continue being good with in the next year is really thinking about um, what I actually wear and think about wardrobe stables and not be afraid to let a project take a bit longer if I think I can get more wear out of it. So for example, this cardigan obviously took longer than if I knitted a raglan sweater in the same yarn, but I know that I would get much more wear out of this, even though it requires you to keep a track of the pattern, which while it isn't hard, is still something you have to check in the pattern every time, the double knit band, etc. Um, but I'm keen to do more of that in the new, in the next, in this year. Um, and in general, just kind of knit for the life I have um, and kind of be thoughtful of that. And I feel like I had one more. I think the third, the third one is really the accessories one. I want to knit accessories from stash and get through all of that. And that's kind of, that's kind of it. Um, I've, I've waffled enough. Let's hope I can cut down the length of this video because it will definitely be long. But I want to thank you so much for watching and thank you if you've stuck with me in all 2023. I hope to see more of all of you in 2024 and um, I hope you had a lovely holiday um, and I will see you all soon. Bye!